Allah Ta'ala inside it has said that there is cure in this kitab, there is mercy in this kitab, rahmah, and especially for the mu'mineen, 100% it is. So we are not in loss at all in reality. We, we can, it cannot be for us that if Allah Ta'ala has said about this kitab that there is shifa in this kitab, then there is rahmah as well, then for a mu'min, how can a mu'min lose out and, and suffer in any way? Think about it. That Allah has given the kitab to that person, the book. That person Allah has given the book to and revealed it to. He is rahmatul lil alameen. Yes, who came to deliver that message. He is rahmatul lil alameen. Mercy to mankind. And we've got such a great guidance and such a confirmed kitab. And even after that, a person loses out and suffers. What's the reason for that? The reason for that is that we temporarily or on the side accept this kitab but we don't we don't accept it from our heart when for example a doctor or somebody gives a cure if you don't accept him from your heart then you won't utilize the medicines that person prescribes yes i remember that for example i go to places and for example if you don't believe in that person or if you don't accept that doctor and they say did you use the medicine say oh i don't feel like it so the, to accept from the heart is the most important thing that if you accept from the heart then even if in that medicine there's no effect then Allah Ta'ala will create the effect in that solution so this is such a kitab and we, we accept it but despite accepting it we're still in loss we are given a complete list of our problems and maybe there's nothing that I've not covered already what I've just said and my start, my initiation was that in that every point I included in that so nothing's left for us that a person is poss- probably occupied if you see somebody's mentally unwell depression now what's that medicine here medicine there tranquilizers are there this dose here this there the jinn and ghost and uh, amil and a magician and exorcist but if only a person takes the guidance of this kitab about which Allah Ta'ala said that everything is present in this kitab and the kitab will prescribe to you the solution. How can it be that Allah Ta'ala has given this kitab, the shifa and this rahmah in it, especially for the mu'mineen, the believers, and he is losing out. So it's our mistake then, isn't it? It's our fault if we don't look at this kitab. We don't refer to this kitab. And all cures are present in this kitab, as I said. So what's the root cause the Qur'an is telling us that all the sicknesses that I explained to you, or the, the maladies, what's the reason behind them? Say, subhanallah. Why is the reason being told? Because when you realize the reason of a illness, then the cure is there. The solution is there. If you know the reason, then there's nothing left, nothing's hidden left. There's no issue then after that, no obstruction. So everybody who's listening or sat here, somebody is occupied or affected by a, a disease or an illness or an issue. So the Quran tells us the root cause of that. One is the common uh, illness nowadays, which we call depression from the young person to the old person. Everyone you see nowadays, people complain of depression. What's the reason for this that the Quran is telling us? What is this depression, this illness? What is this uh, distress? Oh, I'm upset. Why does a person suddenly become uh, totally like despondent and lose hope? Why do suddenly arguments start in the house? Suddenly you're sitting at home and suddenly your character changes. Yes, emotionally, especially the mu'mineen I'm speaking to. The, why does a person suddenly get disturbed? Why does our society or environment get disturbed? Why is the divorce suddenly taking place? 30, 30, 40 years, decades people live together, suddenly divorce. Children as well they have. So what's the reason for this? What are the reasons for this? So the Quran tells us the reason, there's a reason for this. And what is that reason? Wasawis. Thoughts. Negative thoughts. Yes, nafsiyati people understand this, what I'm saying. This is called also nafsiyati, the word, you know, uh, inner thoughts, and evil thoughts. There's no other reason for this. Bad thoughts is the reason. Wasawis. Yes, this is what we call waswasa, wasawis in Arabic as well. Bad thoughts, negative thoughts. So these are the thoughts that suddenly make a person go crazy. The thoughts are what make him fight and quarrel. 
These negative thoughts will deceive you. Thoughts will make you fearful. Everything, the thoughts overwhelm a person and control him, his movements. Everything about him. And if these thoughts can come under control, then the human being becomes very strong indeed as a human being. لا خوفون عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الله says those people they have controlled and and they're on top of their thoughts no خوف no غم ألا أولي الله الله says these are the friends of Allah Allah Taala has defined his friends أوليان أوليان those who show miracles كرامات and many murids he has so many people followers and and he shows this and that and magic no this is not أولي الله Waliyallah is that person who is the friend of Allah. And the friend is he who accepts the order of the boss. Yeah, you cannot say subhanAllah. You can't be safe saying you're your friend. What do we come back from? From Madinatul Manawra, tell me. Lanatullah. Allah's lanat khas is what a human brings back. There's no bigger loss than this. What does a person bring back from the Kaaba? Ghadab Allah. Allah's ghadab and wrath and anger. I'm not saying this, the Quran is saying this. Ghadab, wrath of Allah. And we're rotating doing tawaf. And we're not rotating doing tawaf, but rather the slaps are being given to us. I've invited you, give you a man, a brute head. But oh, disrespectful person, you've not accepted me as the hakim, as the lord, as the king, as the god. If you did, then you would follow your life according to my orders when you're doing tawaf. Your face would be correct, your clothes would be correct, inside you would be correct, externally would be correct. Everything would be according to my hukam and order. That's called obeying the hakim. Now if you believe me in the hakim, your food, drink, walking, employment, house, business, everything. Whose hukam would you obey? My hukam, Allah says, my order, my preference. My color, my friend, what's your color, Allah? Sibghatullah wa mahsan. There's no more beautiful color. There's no greater method and lifestyle than this that Allah Ta'ala is defining. Allah's Nabi Sallam, the example that Allah Ta'ala sent to us. Libas, then his libas is the greatest. The color he likes is the best color. Whatever he ate, his food was the best. The style, the way he used to sleep was the best way. The style and the manner that he walked with, that was the best way to walk. The way that he used to smile and laugh, that was the best way from everything. And, and the way the lovers of his were more than 100,000, Allah Ta'ala created his companions. And the way they smiled, they also smiled. The way he walked, they also used to walk like that. Why? Why? Because they believed Allah as their Rabb, his companions. They believed Allah as their Hakim. They believed Allah as their King. The King is He, then we will obey the King. Say Subhanallah. Not this, oh, say in a plane for a few hours, go to another country. Oh no, our Rabb, there was someone else and here someone else. There we like something else and here we like something else. No, there's any corner of the world wherever Allah Ta'ala takes you. We have one color, one effect, one lifestyle, which is the color, the lifestyle of Rasulullah says. You understand what I'm saying? You don't understand what I'm saying. So say loudly, subhanallah, subhanallah. Yes, what's the reason? Why? Why are there so many ways in one masjid? You come to a masjid, how many difference? The tariqa, I'll tell you, I'll give you the formula, the solution, how you can be safe from the whispering. Two things we've learned. One, our destruction, the root cause of our destruction is what? Wasawis. Isn't it? Correct? Fi sudurin nas. So who created this? Who created the waswasa? Min sharril waswasil khannas. The who creates the evil whisper? Shaitan. Why? Because he said, Aduwum Mubin. He said, not some small time enemy. He's come from thousands of years. He got the permission from Allah. He came with Ijazah. He didn't come without Ijazah. Yeah? That can anyone without Ijazah do the work against Allah? He was very understanding. He was Alim, Arif. He was aware. He had all the knowledge. He said, Let me take the permission from Allah. Allah will give this permission. Because Allah listens to anyone's dua, anyone's supplication. He said, Okay, fine, Allah, you're expelling me. You're sending me away from it. But one uh, request from me, please accept. Allah said, What? He said, That I want to deviate. I want these people who follow you and believe in you to leave you. Have I got permission? Allah says, permission. Go from in front, from behind, from the top, from below. Whatever you want to do from any direction, I give you jaza, you can go. Go and try and to deviate them. He said, okay, I've got the permission. So Allah Ta'ala also then gave the solution to his servant. Say, subhanallah. 
Allah announced, قُلْ عَوْضُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ O oh, Mahbub announced to the people about shaitan, he'll try his hardest. And what's the tariqah to be? Save from him. A'udh, Allah says, there's only one way that turn to Allah immediately. Seek refuge in Allah. Do you understand my tafsir? Do you understand my tafsir? My commentary? This is the reality of the heart I'm sharing with you. How many quarters? How many rooms? Bayatan. Two rooms. Two houses. Two abodes. One is... The words of the hadith, what is inside the heart? That one house, one room, one quarter, who lives in that? The angel lives in there, dwells in there. And in the other quarter, the other home, is shaitan who dwells in there. And look at how Allah Ta'ala has prepared this. So the reality are the hadith of Sayyid Muslim I'm sharing with you. It's not a drama, it's not a story. Yes, maybe I'm broken down, but I take you to the end point, to the understanding. Yes, I'm broken down, humble. I'm not worth anything, but I deliver the complete message to you, inshallah. So he stated there are two rooms in your heart, two houses in your heart. So understand the solution to the waswasa, the evil thoughts, how we will have to eliminate the evil whispers and become human beings. So in our heart, there are two rooms, two abodes. And who lives in the two rooms? In one lives, yes, the angel, malaika. And the other one, a shaitan. Shaitan lives in the other room. Who's telling us this? Yes, Mukhli Azim. Nabi al Karim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mubashirun wa nadir. He came into the dunya. He is telling us this teaching. So then, now listen. So on one side is shaitan in the heart, and on the other hand is the angel, the other side. And when insan, the human being, when he does the dhikr of Allah, Allah, the hadith says, when a person does the dhikr of Allah, then shaitan runs out of his room, his house, he comes out of the heart. Look at this hadith, Allah has given us a complete system. Allah has developed this system inside us. Allah has created this solution, such a great favor the Qur'an has done upon us. It's telling us the solution that never should you be devoid of success. Allah says, لا خوف عليم, And you'll come into Jannah, into paradise during your life. And your hearing will change, your seeing will change, your tongue will change. If you control your evil thoughts, never will you run away from jama'ah. Pray in jama'ah, never will you run away from salah, never will you run away from dhikr, never will you leave your dhikr, never will you listen to your was because you've controlled your bad thoughts. Yes, so at that time when you do dhikr of Allah, this hadith tells us what will happen then. Shaitan runs, he scarpers. Scarpers. And when you stop doing dhikr of Allah, the hadith will tell us then, when you stop doing dhikr of Allah, what will happen? Shaitan, he continues and he puts his, his teeth onto your heart, ready to bite. This is the system that's happening inside us. And that he puts your, his teeth onto your heart, his bite, as soon as he puts that, uh, his, you know, his fangs, you could say, you know, with the fangs or with which, you know, like you have the, you know, you could have like the beak, you could say. He's got his beak, he puts it on your heart, through which the injection is made. Then suddenly the waswasa will come into your heart because of his sting. You don't pray salah, you don't need to pray salah. If you pray salah, how will you run your shop? How are you going to earn bread? And the customer's coming, you're running to salah. It's a waswasa shaitan. Oh, leave it, I'll start from tomorrow. That tomorrow will never arrive, never arrive. You don't go to pray in Jamal, I'll go from tomorrow. Oh, why don't you do this action? I'll do it from tomorrow. Why don't you keep the beard? Or after Hajj, I'll keep the beard. After I get married, I'll keep the beard. He says, everything he, d- he delays, delays. What is this? Waswasa shaitan that will take a person to the bank of death. And when the waswasa goes far away, immediately at that time, fear comes into that human being. And his body starts to shake. His eyes are humble at that time. He says, Allah, I'm finished. I'm finished. So many days and years I've wasted. Allah, my mouth is in front of me. Suddenly his life changes, his style changes. So how do you change? Logic tells us in the deed there are two rooms, two houses in your heart. One is the room of who? The angel and the other one is shaitan. Soon as you do dhikr of Allah, shaitan will scarper. He will leg it. And as soon as you stop doing dhikr of Allah, stop remembering Allah, then shaitan will come and put his beak, his mouth on your heart and he will inject the waswasas into your heart. Subhanallah. One moment in his life should never be devoid of the dhikr of Allah. He should never stop doing dhikr of Allah. Ya ayyul ladheena amnu dhikru la dhikran kathira. One moment in the life if you leave dhikr of Allah and your death comes, then wasawish shaitan will be inside you when you pass away. This is dhikr-e-qalbi, dhikr of the heart, my friends. 
ذکر قلبی امیجن نقش بندی اس اول باڈی از افیکٹڈ دی نقش بندی ٹیچر ٹرینز دی اول باڈی ٹو ڈو ذکر اللہ ہیو کوریج ڈٹرمنیشن ڈونٹ ویسٹ ٹائم شیک ٹیک ہولڈ اف یور شیک اینڈ میک یور باڈی ا ذاکر ادروائز ریمبر دس واقعات دیز ایونٹس ہیو ٹولڈ یو فرام دی حدیث سیویر ٹائم از ٹو کم سیویر ٹائم از ٹو کم for about which one second a person if he does do zikr of a human being if this is his conclusion then those who don't do zikr at all imagine their hal what salah what mu'amalat what will be the circumstances and how much he will be severely treated a man is so weak today of the human being yes imagine their hal